Hi everyone, my name is Jenny and today we are taking a closer look at the Jura Perigo Loriasso, answering your most frequently asked questions about this watch. Again, this is another first on my channel. I've never had a GP in a video and I'm really excited to see how it turns out. So in this video, we'll take a closer look at the history of GP, how well this one wears, especially, you know, for smaller wrists, how well it is made and how it compares to other very similar looking watches like the AP Royal Oak, for example, and more importantly, how much of a, you know, copycat it really is. So let's get started. All right, first, let's take a closer look at Jura Perigo as a watchmaker. And I have to be honest here, uh, the first question I asked myself here was, how do you even pronounce that name? So I looked it up, I've checked the interview with the CEO. Here it is, it's Jura Perigo. Okay, good, now that we've got that out of the way, let's take a closer look at its history. Their origins date back to 1791, so really old. I mean, for comparison, Audemars Piguet dates back to around 1875 and Patek Philippe was established in 1839. Only, you know, a few others like Blancpain are older with Blancpain being able to trace back their origins to 1735, it's insane. It all started with a watchmaker and goldsmith, Jean-Francois Bott. He was the first to ever to include every step of, you know, making a watch under one roof. Uh, he basically laid the foundation to what later became the Bott House, which then merged with Girard Perigot and C. Later on, um, oh yeah, and the final name, Girard Perigot, was created when in 1854, watchmaker Girard married Marie Perigot. Um, well, then founding Girard Perigo two years later. I thought that was a very sweet detail here. Um, then over time, GP slowly but surely solidified their status within the horological world, being able to claim many, many inventions and patterns as their own. For example, they have the Constant Escapement LM from Girard Perigo, featured in their Bridges collection. Um, it solved a problem watchmakers were struggling with for centuries. You know, that of constant force, kind of need that. Uh, anyways, more recently, as in 2022, so last year, GP as well as Ulysse Nardin, who were previously owned by the Sauvin Group, who is owned by the Caring Group, were sold to the CEO of GP. According to him, though they had to lay off uh, a lot of employees during the start of the pandemic, the financial backing from that sale is going to help them build a strong foundation, ensuring a long-term development of both brands quote ends here um and i mean i can't tell you what this long-term strategy is going to look like since this is a rather recent development but i don't know perhaps we'll be able to see you know some of these first step already this year with you know watches and wonders coming up soon so yeah i think we should all be on the lookout for that it could be very interesting so as you can see gp is by no means a newbie um, or a watchmaker that does not take it very seriously they are a very established but perhaps not yet very well marketed watchmaker that has a lot to offer if you you know take the time to you know take a close look at it and with that we are going to do just that and check out the Laureato. The Laureato I have right here has a diameter of 42 millimeter, a lug to lug of 50 um, but a rather tame height of 10.6 millimeter. The case and bracelet are made entirely from stainless steel with some extremely nice finishing details. There are pretty much no sharp edges. Everything feels very smooth and starting from the octagonal bezel, it mixes a mirror-like polish with a very soft brushing, really like that. I also really like how every edge is basically beveled. So it makes everything look really high end. Yeah, let's continue. Uh, the dial is not white, but silver with a classic three hand layout and the date at three o'clock. GP calls the pattern on the dial uh, Clou de Paris, so it's a you know form of guilloche, which is also something in a variation Patek uses for its Calatrava or AP for their Royal Oak, for example. The case is water resistant up to 100 meter with a sapphire crystal um, on both sides, which means you can see the in-house movement through the case back, which is supposed to have a power reserve of 45 hours, according to GP. Oh, but before we continue with checking in on how this Laureato actually wears, I want to take the time and thank the sponsor of this portion of today's video, Chronext. 
Chronext is an international online pre-owned watch retailer with over 32 brands and 800 models providing pickup locations and lounges all over the world for you, making it a perfect place not only for people who just, you know, started with watches, but also seasoned collectors and enthusiasts. You can use my promo code Jenny when purchasing from Chronix to get an extra discount on your next order. So that is a Jenny with an I, not, not a Y, it's an I. Oh, and just so you know, there's no financial kickback for me, but you will get to save money on your next Chronix purchase. I have bought through Chronix before. I got my Rolex Yacht Master 37 from them. And I can absolutely recommend Chronix if you want fair prices and more importantly, you know, a peace of mind when buying watches online. So that is code Jenny with an I on Chronix.com for an extra discount on your next watch purchase. Right now that we've got that covered, I want to talk about how it wears. As you can see, this watch has an integrated bracelet like the rest of it, very um, 70s inspired with a folding butterfly clasp and unfortunately no form of quick adjustment. The three link bracelet with the polished middle link uh, feels very silky so though it wears really large, um, they are flexible and smooth enough to not make you feel their size, which I think is important. Uh, as you can see with my 150 millimeter wrist and circumference, this watch is definitely a tad bit uh, too large. But I have to say the curved down lugs make this watch appear way smaller than I thought it would. So yeah, I mean, hey, it's a 42 millimeter diameter and a 50 millimeter lug to lug on paper. And that's pretty much an immediate no from me when I read stuff like that. But I was positively surprised to see how it's still somehow, I would even say manageable on my wrist. Uh, luckily, GP offers this in various sizes. So they start out with a 34 millimeter up to a 38. And then we have the 42, which I have in this video here. And the biggest one is a 44 millimeter in diameter. Many of you know that I am a huge fan of whenever a watchmaker offers a very, you know, iconic watch of theirs in different sizes and adjusts proportions accordingly. I think it's one of the smartest things a watchmaker can do. And I'm really happy that the Laureato is available in so many different sizes. In terms of wear and tear, a lot of you wanted to know if this is a scratch magnet or not. I would say that this one is way more forgivable when it comes to scratches and other 70s inspired sports steel watches like the Royal Oak, for example. Of course, the more flat surfaces you have on a watch, the more careful you have to be. But since the top surface is brushed with only, you know, a very slim polished edge, I can see how this one is not that prone to show, you know, hairline scratches right away, for example. The only issue here could be the middlings, but then again, polished surfaces are relatively easy to polish. Uh, because they don't have a brushing pattern, you know, horizontal or whatever, since they are, well, polished. So, you know, it could be a comparatively easy fix to make it look like a new here again. Right, lots of you have asked me about whether or not this physically feels cheap or whether or not it appears, um, how would you explain that? Emotionally not as great because it is perceived as just another copy of other very popular and famous watches like the Royal Oak, for example, you know, given its design. First of all, let me tell you that this does not feel anything but cheap. I mean, though price is not often a good indicator of quality, this is a watch that retails for about $13,000. So we are price wise above Rolex for sports steel watches. Um, and you can tell that GP knows what they're doing. Everything feels silky smooth. There's little to no rattling. You know the rattle test, if you remember the rattle test. The entire surface feels just fantastic. And there's really not much else I can say. It just feels really good. Although this is not as expensive as a, you know, 41 millimeter Royal Oak, for example, it's definitely up there in terms of finishing, but that leads me directly to the next part because the Laureato has long been seen as a kind of thoughtless knockoff of the Royal Oak or the Nautilus when, you know, looking at the bracelet. And I mean, yeah, it is a tricky situation. The Royal Oak was released in 1972. The first Laureato was launched only three years later in 1975, which already shared similarities um, with the Royal Oak back then. Other watchmakers like Patek uh, followed with the Nautilus in 1976, so a year later, I believe. And I guess we also have to include the Rolex Oyster Quartz, for example, from 1977, um, or the IBWC Engineer SL Jumbo, too, if we want to talk about similar watches from that age. Of course, watches like the Oyster Quartz, for example, aren't around anymore. And with the anniversary re-release in 2016 of the Laureato GP introduced, 
a rework of the Laureato that looks closer to a modern royal oak than the original Laureato. And I would say yes, the modern variations of this watch are perhaps a bit too much like the Royal Oak in my opinion, but ultimately the Laureato and its companions, you know, like the Royal Oak, the Nautilus or the Ingenieur, are all products of their time. There's always someone who starts a trend and others who will then adapt that design and give it their own spin. To you know, you just cater to current market and customer demands. That's just smart business, I guess. And since this is anything but new or surprising in the watch world, I don't think I can hold it against GP. They have shown over time that they're technically more than capable to, you know, work on their own great watches and movements. Does that excuse the perceived lack of originality? I don't know. It's perceived. I guess that's ultimately very subjective and comes down to whatever you prefer. And that's it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching this and a big shout out uh, to Chronix for sponsoring a part of this video today. If you want to watch more reviews and watch related content, I recommend subscribing to my channel and give this video a thumbs up. So I will see you in my next one. And now I want to hear from you in the comments what you think about this Laureato. Is this just a copycat since it was released a few years later than the Royal Oak? Or is this just as valid as other similar watches like the Nautilus or the Oyster class, for example? I'm very curious to read your hot takes in the comments. So yeah, make sure to share them down below. Uh, thanks again for watching this video and I will see you in my next one. Bye. Oh, and thank you so much for all the positive feedback on my last video where I talked about uh, Joel's watch from The Last of Us. I was a bit nervous to release that one because, you know, it's like gaming, TV show, watches. So I wasn't sure if you guys are going to like it or not. But yeah, I'm really happy you did. And um, yeah, I'm excited to do something similar in the future if something comes up. Um, I just wanted to share this. That's it. Bye.